What's up guys, this is Josh from Fresh Start Customs. I'm coming to you today with a tutorial on how to laser engrave liquor items without the crumb tray. Um, this has probably been one of the most asked questions um, around and I'm finally getting around to it here. So I'm going to show you what to do, what to prepare for it, um, and we'll go from there. So first off, this is the piece that I'm going to be engraving today. I already masked the top of it, so you can't really see what it looks like, but I'll flip it over. It looks like this. Um, and then they routed off the edges. can't really see it now, but we'll get to that here later, and you can see it better. Bought this on a garage sale, pretty cheap. Um, so what better way to make something cool out of it, and then donate it to probably a poker run for either the VFW or the Philopia Country Club um, for the Neurological Center. So we're gonna go ahead and make a cool little plaque using one of uh, my Etsy designs with the faded eagle here and I just put Born to Ride on there. Um, that way anybody can take it if one person declines uh, a donation, the other one might take it. So we'll go through that. Um, so let's get started here. First thing you're gonna wanna do, I'm gonna move this out of the way for right now. As you can tell, the crumb tray is still in there. And we're gonna use our digital caliper tool here and make sure you turn it on when it's at zero. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come all the way over here, right on the edge of your tray, way over here. And you're gonna take the bottom edge right here of your caliper and while you open it, you see that little stick that comes out here. This is what we're going to use to measure the depth of the tray. We're going to go right along the side of it. It's kind of tricky to do uh, while it's in there, but you're going to just hold your digital caliper kind of sideways here, and we're going to use that end to measure here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this right along the edge like this, and we're going to open it up. And I know you can't see the top of it or the measurement right now, but um, I'm going to tell you what mine reads here, and then we're going to go from there. So mine is reading 1.503. So what we're going to do is we're going to write that down. And you're only going to have to do this once. So that's 1.503. Okay, uh, I got that wrote down. And now what you're gonna do um, with that same stick here, um, I moved it a little bit, but now it's a little bit higher because I slightly moved it, but that was the measurement. I already wrote it down. Now what we're gonna do is use that same bottom edge and we're going to measure this tiny lip. It's kind of hard to see on camera here, but this black uh, plastic here has a little bit of a lip onto the actual tray itself. You're going to measure from the tray, the top of the tray to the top of that lip. So all you got to do is rest your digital caliper on this plastic black lip here. And let me see if I can shine this light a little bit better in here. No, it's not really working, but you'll see what I'm talking about. It's this black strip here. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want that little piece, even if it's like this small, to touch the top of one of those honeycombs make sure it doesn't fall down into the honeycomb it's kind of tricky to get it to rest on there so i'm going to attempt that and then make sure it lands right on the honeycomb here this is the hardest part there we go i think i finally got it so that comes out to exactly one or zero point one five, as you can see there. Sorry that took a little bit, but it is tricky to not get it to fall into that thing. So we're gonna write down that 0 0.15. And as you can see, I just wrote that down on a piece of scrap wood there. Uh, not the best handwriting. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract those two. Um, so let me go ahead and get a calculator open and we'll go ahead and check this out. So we are left with 1.353. So we need to subtract those two. Come out to 
353. So now that we got that tray figured out, as you can see, that's going to be our tray height always from this point forward. You'll never have to do this again now that you know your tray height. So now what we need to do is take the tray out and then we'll move on to the next step and show you how to do this without the tray. Um, I'll probably cut to the next section as uh, my camera base is right in front of the tray thing here. But to take the tray out, you just have to flip this front part down just like this. And then this tray will pull straight out, but my camera stands in the way. So we'll cut over without the tray in there and we'll continue from there. All right, you guys. So we got the tray out and I still have the front flap down. So you gotta make sure you put that back up, obviously. Uh, just covering all bases here. And then you're gonna see the nice shiny floor here. So I'm gonna try and get this a little bit more centered for you guys. There we go. I think that's centered. So now we're gonna go back to the block that we're going to engrave. So what you're gonna to wanna to do now is you're gonna to wanna to measure the thickness of this block, how thick it is. Um, and you're gonna use that with your digital caliper again. You'll just expand it, measure the thickness, and that's what it'll be. So I already pre-measured this thickness, wrote it down. That's how thick this is. And um, what we have to do is we have to get this up to this height for your tray. Um, I try and get it as close as possible, but sometimes you go over and that's how it is. There's two ways that you can do this. You take your thickness of this block of wood and then the thickness of whatever you put underneath it. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna use two of these scrap pieces of thick draft board. Um, make sure you have a flat base. And then we're gonna use some cardboard to bump it up in height if needed. So there's a couple ways you can do that original thickness of that uh, wooden block that I was talking about, plus the thickness of this. And as long as it equals uh, like 0 0.001 higher than the tray height that you did, you're good to go. If it doesn't, um, then you're gonna wanna go a little bit higher. Um, I would actually go up to 0.1 just to be safe. Um, so let's go ahead and get this measured here. I'll measure it out. Um, what I like to do, instead of doing that, I like to put them all together at one time. So I'm gonna take a guess here and I'm gonna go ahead and just use both of the draft board and the one of these um, cardboards that I'm using. So instead of measuring this and then the thickness of that cardboard and two draft boards and then adding them together, you can just sandwich them all together, turn on your digital caliper, make sure it's on zero, and then measure your thickness. I'm sorry for the angle here, I'm trying my best here, you guys. So as you can see, that comes out to right around, I'm trying to catch it on camera here, 1.344 and our tray was 1.353 so we're not thick enough so we got to add some thickness to this um, i'm going to go ahead and add one more thick cardboard sheet to it and we'll see where we come out to be so that was a perfect example if you're too thin it's not going to work so now that we had two cardboard um, pieces in there and two draft pieces plus our material. We're gonna remeasure this thickness. And 1.442, so we are over now. So that looks like 1.442 is pretty good there, so we're gonna use that. So let me go ahead and write down that. And I'm gonna drop this in here. That was 1.442. So, as you can see, this is going to be our total uh, height of all of these materials stacked together. And then this is going to be your crumb tray height. So, all that we're going to have to do now, sorry about that, I bumped the camera. All we're going to have to do now is subtract 1.442 from your, cr your crumb tray height, 1.353. 
Um, and your chrome tray height will be different, so don't use my uh, measurements there. My other machine is 1.391. Um, I know that one off the top of my head. I use that machine for over a year now. So this one is brand new, um, well, new-ish. So I never really had to use the chrome tray all that much out of this one. So we're gonna go ahead and subtract these. I'll give you the real number and then I'll show you on the interface here what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and square this up a little bit. And we'll go from there. So we'll make sure this is hopefully as good as possible here. And I'm not going to use a jig or anything. You guys can use a jig if you need to know how to do jigs. Um, I did a video on that as well. I'm just going to go ahead and guess on this one. And if it's off by a little bit, it's off by a little bit. Um, but I think we'll be pretty good. So let me go ahead and close this lid and we'll go ahead and get started here. And I'll show you, I'll get a little bit closer in here. All right. All right, so we are back on the computer here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that height of the, the material thickness that we already calculated. It's 1.442 going to subtract by the tray height which is 1. Point, whoops 353 three, there we go and then that gives you a height of 0. 0.89 so this should still work like i said if you can get it up to 0. 0.1 that's good too but this should still work here so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead um, if you haven't done it already you click here choose uncertified material and then we're gonna type in that uh, thickness that we came up with there so the zero or 0 0.089 so 0 0.089 we're gonna click submit and then that will readjust and you can see it a little bit more clearly now um, I went ahead and already typed in the settings of what uh, natural or what um, proof grade maple is we're just gonna go ahead and try proof grade maple settings that usually works for most wood um, that I've used uh, most random wood so we're gonna just use that uh, thousand speed full power convert to dots 170 lines and I just rasterized the whole image so it just comes up as a, as an image versus text there so it's essentially what a draft photo equals out to be um, and I created this design using like I said that photo from or the image that I have on my Etsy page and then just wrote born to ride and then I drew um, a rectangle around it the exact size as the top lip of this material here and as you can see not completely matching up so that's why we're gonna go ahead and take a guess here and it looks like it we need to tilt it just a little bit um, and then like I said if you want it to be perfect use a jig um, but this is kind of what I'm doing right now there we go that looks pretty good and um, you when you turn it it's going to show that rectangle around there but this is exactly what we're gonna want here so just to be safe, I'm gonna bump it down just a smidge like that. There we go. And for our cut line, that was just me using it as a guide to not use a jig. Um, you can use this as um, uh, a cut line, like if you were actually cutting the wood, but we're not gonna do that, so we're gonna hit this on ignore. That way it doesn't actually cut that cut line out. So it's just gonna do this engrave and then we're gonna ignore that. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started here. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. And that's pretty much how you guys use the Glowforge without the crumb tray. So we'll get started there um, and we'll continue from there. Uh, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna actually recenter this a little bit because that's kind of down farther than what I want it to be. Um, it's always best to, if you're not gonna use a jig, 
to center um, your material as close as possible to the center of the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and hopefully that will help here. There we go. That's a little bit more centered. Um, and you'll see it refresh in just a second here. There we go. So now we're going to have to realign this again. Um, and I kind of help center it there. So we're going to have to go off of the cut line, which is that really gray line that you can barely see. There we go. And if you can see that real thin gray line, that's what I'm talking about there. Um, I'm going to shift this over just a little bit. Okay, great. So that looks pretty much as centered as possible as of right now. Um, we're going to go off of that, see what it does. Sorry for the inconvenience there, and we're going to go ahead and get started now. All right, and there you guys have it. So that's exactly how you do uh, laser engraving in the Glowforge without the crumb tray in. And just to explain this a little bit more in depth, I'm going to go ahead and open the lid here. And I'm going to bring my light down a little bit closer so you guys can see as much as possible in there. So to explain this a little bit more, um, let's say my hand is the crumb tray height. It's going to be just underneath where this is. That's why we typed in the difference between the top of my hand, which would be the top of the crumb tray, and the top of this right here which was that 0 0.089 that we typed in. Um, now, if you would have typed in, let's say, this entire thickness, which was the 1.442, Glowforge interface would say, hey, you have way too thick a material in there because it's reading the material based on if you had the tray in there still. So you can only go up to 0.5 inches with the tray in, so that's why you get that error message. So if you get that error message, rewind the video, watch it again, and uh, do it this way so you have that real thin strip. Um, the closest you get to 0.1, the better, I feel like, because then it's reading just right above the crumb tray. It's easiest. But if you have to go higher, that's no problem as long as it's not over 0.5 inches um, and it doesn't hit the air assist fan underneath the... Uh, underneath this right here there's an air assist fan under there so if you tap that with the machine you, uh, you could have the lens come loose so this looks pretty good with the masking tape on um, we're gonna go ahead and pull the masking tape off I'll throw a picture right here at the end of the video so you can see what it looks like with it off um, as you can tell if I pull this a little bit closer there's a few chips in the wood right by the stars that's just because it's an unknown material um, so that will verify um, and it also looks like it's pulling out the detail on the feathers there so we'll go ahead and see what it looks like with all this off because all the white is going to be the dark brown color of the wood and we'll go from there all right you guys I decided to do a video on the engrave after I pulled the masking tape off um, instead of a photo here so I just wanted to go over this really quick it looks like since this material is a lot denser it did fade out the lines a little bit there still has cool wash effect with the wood engraving um, haven't decided if I want to keep it like this or if I'm gonna just sand it completely flat again and then start over um, with the, with deeper settings and maybe a lighter um, type of stain here so this one's going to be going to the Neurological Center more than likely. If they can't accept donations, then we're going to go for the VFW or the Legion Hall. So I hope you guys liked the video. This will at least explain um, how to use the crumb tray. And I'll decide whether I'm going to wipe this clean and start over um, or not. Let me know in the comments if you like it just how it is or if you think I should just erase and start all the way over let me know i hope you guys liked the video i hope this helps you out and we'll talk to you next time if you guys want this design i'll put our 
Etsy shop in the description. And if you, of course, if you don't have a Glowforge yet and want to save $500, you can use the referral link at the bottom too. I use that towards making these videos. I don't take the money. So that's up to you guys, and I hope this helped you out. We'll talk to you guys next time.